So, back with an update. Uh, Brandon gonna be so mad at me because I did not film so much work. Um, I have cut out so much of the front radiator support, you can't even call it a radiator support anymore. I literally have this much room, this much real estate in front of the engine. Uh, I can like almost change the cam and not take the grill shell off. <laughs> so it's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I've gutted these down to like their see-through. You can see all the way through and then the center section of the radiator support which was down here is totally gone it just begins where the transmission cooler uh hinge hold down fastens to it right there i think you can see where that runs out so the body bushing that held this up is replaced by a small piece of the rubber hose like what i used uh to make the cooling lines with and it traded two pounds for one ounce so traded this piece two pounds body bushing or excuse me two pounds for two ounces that's what it was i want to say this was one pound i don't know it might be two anyway the whole pound of stuff the whole pile of stuff is uh 15 pounds so these are all just pieces that came out radiator support uh I trimmed the plastic that holds these headlights up. This was all one piece. This is now two pieces. The side that holds this side of the headlight up, the side that holds this side of the headlight up. Used to be little brackets that stuck off of it everywhere. and It's just cleaned up. It's just cleaned up. I need to clean up the wiring, but got all that cleaned up. And then uh, still got to do the fans. I haven't done any of the wiring as far as the battery relocation or the coolant temperature sensor location um or low coolant rather uh, this is what i got done in the back my my amazonian fans have finally arrived um this this season we've been having has really hampered the shipping times took me like two weeks to get these things or more really didn't even date it that hard i start i got tired of looking so much so i'm gonna put these two on the tailgate like so um it's gonna breathe out of these holes i'm obviously gonna cut the circle out behind that and then i'm gonna make some slots to go in the top of the tailgate and make a little spoiler type thing that fastens directly to the tailgate and you know fills the gaps so it'll be pretty cool um this is a piece of hardwood like i think i've said before this is a door that i need to just shape up just a little bit to get it to fit good and then that's gonna hinge inward like so it's gonna hinge inward so that i can get to my tonneau cover latch so i would actually be able to lock that and lock the bed which the bed's fully functional um other than the lines and wires that are going to be running through it i can put a like a tailgate net in front of the radiator and the battery box and stuff and totally utilize this bed i mean it's fine so yeah that's that's pretty cool pretty cool little feature i'm glad i left that bed floor um with what we've got sitting in there let me just move the nitrous bottle to where it's supposed to be and shut the tiny cover you're not supposed to pick these things up by the valve but you know it is what it is. Alright. So now the nitrous bottle is where it's going roughly. The um, fans are on the tailgate. And there's going to be two fans in front of this radiator pushing. So there will be two pushers that are on a switch. Two pullers that are on the PCM. And then two pushing out of the tailgate per se on a switch. So... Hopefully, this hole will flow enough air to exhaust the coolant, the, the hot air away from the radiator. I mean, I hope it works. Um, the only hole it's really going to be breathing in from is this, this side of the bed. Um, 
I got to cut that little rubber flap out that's in there so that the relief in the front of the bed will allow it in. I hope it's got enough flow. I really do. But if if it's not enough flow, I'm just going to add fans. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it hard enough to get it to cool off. So yeah, that, that's pretty much what I've gotten done. Uh, this is kind of how my spoiler is going to work. I'm going to use this part. Um, and that's going to be like a like a spacer. The holes that I'm drilling are going to be slots like that. Like a hole saw end, a hole saw end. Use the grinder to connect it and that'll be my dropout slot. And then the spoiler, which is this piece, is going to sit on top of that piece. So that you can't really see the holes in the top of the tailgate. And then I'm going to get a little... Little similar idea off to the sides because that piece is four feet wide and the tailgate 61 and a half inches wide so i've got to add some small pieces on each end i might do a little more tilt on those we'll see how it looks i'm just gonna mess with it but it is coming along it's coming along oh yeah never never check the the weight here let's see what we got we've got 46 on the rear um it's come up it's come up a lot when it when I started it was forty one point seven I think. Now the total weight's forty fifty eight. So I think total weight's up just a smidge, but not much. And um, yeah. So I'm, when I put these parts in it, the total weight's gonna go up. Um, like I said, none of this stuff's wired. There's no water in it. Um, that's gonna weigh a ton. But basically, here's my parts list. I got hardware. Went to Lowe's and bought it. I got weather stripping went to Lowe's and bought most of it i got wiring um two gauge four gauge zero gauge all these little battery clip options um top pose every, every kind of post got this on off switch this a uh, pretty pretty beastly switch i think it was 300 amp so that's a lot of switch for me um a lot of these little hold downs came in one of the tailor kits. Um, I believe the two gauge came with the tailor kit. I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like it that much. Going with the zero. So, nothing against Taylor. It probably works on most stuff, but it's just my mess is so much longer. That's, you know, it is what it is. That's what, that's what I've been told anyway. It's so much longer that it's like really losing some juice when you start getting from the battery at the very right rear and getting it all the way to the front left underneath the alternator it is like horrible um got a oil pressure gauge from glow shift nitrous pressure gauge from glow shift and what i'm most excited about here the dual wideband uh gauge so i'll finally be able to read bank to bank you know air fuel live and and I, I pretty well trust glow shift i've seen some of their stuff in person and it it seems to seems to be pretty good so we'll see what happens i mean i've never purchased it myself but i uh, got these clips as recommended by brandon uh he claims it's going to make it look really factory like a beer really factory and so we'll see what happens we'll see how good he is at this wiring and cleaning up and stuff because that's not my strong suit at all um got all this loom got these tools that look really funny he said that they spread the loom basically i guess to like glide through the wire you know so it's not such a pain we'll see you know he's gonna have to teach me something and um some pipe wrap dei pipe wrap that's gonna be around the header just where the uh rubber hose is closest to the exhaust because it made me nervous um yeah i i did went about i don't want to be like melting down like i said i don't want to be on the side of the road so down there it gets kind of close so we'll see what happens i'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap up everything that i can to, to keep it you know from melting up melting up my coolant hoses but um back to the parts list got a new baby bottle love it um this thing is this thing is perfect, basically. I mean, it's, it's brand new. I got this new sensor that came with the glow shift. I also bought another sensor that's not come in the mail yet. Um, my bottle that's in the truck is full. This bottle obviously just got shipped to me. It's empty. So that bottle that's full, I'm going to stick on the heater. 
this bottle I'm going to stick in the freezer and transfer the nitrous out of that bottle into this bottle. That way I can install the sensor in that bottle without having to go buy some because I ain't going to lie, this parts list right here, this parts list right here hurt the pocketbook. Um, I don't know what I've spent. I'll add it up when it's all done. But, man, this stuff, go. It, it takes money. It eats money like a like a um, shredder, like a shredder truck. It's, it's ridiculous. So, and yeah, I got some new intake gaskets to add to icing on the cake. Um, this thing's been running okay for a long time, but it's been leaking. The intake gaskets have been leaking for a quite some time. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to just get a look at this thing with the hood down real quick. Because I have not checked the hood coming down since I put these radiator support pieces back on. But let's see what we got here. Oh, it went right down. No, I didn't. Oh, no. There she blows. Yeah, there she blows. It needs to scoot back a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. I don't mind pushing on it. That fitment is perfect. Look at there. Fitment's perfect. Really tight down there. That's why I wanted it. It also, I've also tightened up this gap. Um, I, if you haven't noticed, I forgot to mention, um, this valence is off of a 2015 GMC 2500. That was my boss's. He hit a little rock pile, scratched it up. I think these are the scratches. Yeah, got some scratches on it. It was brand new at the time. He didn't want it. He wanted a new one, and I respect that. But I took this one, and he gave it to me, and I just, like, kind of origamied the bumper. You know, just, like, sliced on the backside a little bit, and then bent it. <laughs> you know, bent it and put bolts in it to keep it where it needed to be. And it worked out pretty cool. I mean, it's neat. And then I scooted the bumper back by cutting the chassis behind it. I believe it was two or two, two or two and a half inches. It gives it a little different profile. Um, yeah, it sucked it back a good bit. You can see here that it pulled the bumper back about that far. So, yeah. And then I just trimmed it off there where I wanted it. And the valence worked out right. That's no trim. So the only part that's been trimmed is the chrome piece and the plastic piece. <clears throat> and then, like I said, back in the day, I had a 35 and a half inch tire on this thing. It was uh, almost 12 and three quarter wide. And I just scrubbed, you know, substantially. So I had also cut this part of the fender. Um, and there's a, a portion of like pinch weld behind this piece of plastic. And I cut the pinch weld all the way back to the floor pan. And did it at a slope like that. Pulled this back down with a zip tie. And honestly, I mean, if I wanted to get fancy, I could cover that hole with a little piece of plastic. But I'm cool with it. You know, that, it helps so much keep it from scrubbing. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, now I'm obviously, I'm on a 285, 75, 16 on the front. And a 305, 70, 16 on the back. Um, they are some big tires and they are heavy. And they're holding me back, but... I'm considering going bigger again. I'd love to see a set of uh, like 33 15s, like some kind of cheater slick type thing, you know, on the back of this thing. It would be sweet, uh, and it would give me a little more mile an hour because it's just a taller tire. And maybe even a 35, I don't know. What, whatever I can make work, you know. And uh, yeah, we're at 46 with the tiny cover flip forward. Let's see. Forty six point two oh one. It fell back down. All right, eighteen seventy two on the rear tire. Total weight forty fifty three. Front weight twenty one eighty one fifty three. It's gone down so much. The front weight when I started was like fifty eight. As a you know fifty eight fifty eight point one something like that. I can't remember. It was horrible. Um. So yeah, this it has come a long way. Yeah, hopefully the uh yeah, hopefully the water in the radiator is gonna compensate more than the water that's in the engine and uh that'll that'll even me up. You can't really see in there. But there's a rubber flap. Yeah. 
cut that out seal everything that weather stripping works so good that i'll show you the one that um one second let me get a light I'm bad for trying to do this stuff in the dark this weather stripping is the bomb it seals so tightly to the bed and it i've used it everywhere it's behind the fan between the radiator shroud and the uh radiator itself it is it should work as um advertised you know it is sealed so this thing double man There's the insulation between the wall and the plastic on the radiator itself. So it's breathing well. You know, those fans are pulling as much efficient air, no leakage whatsoever. Um, that's that's the best way to make them work. Uh, the deal with the push pull thing, I haven't had a lot of experience with. The the idea of putting two pushers here. The, the deal with the PCM fans is they cut off at like 45 mile an hour or something like that. I don't know, 35. My tuner put that function in there. So, but that's fine because I plan on just clicking on the, the highway fans, which will be the pushers and the ones in the tailgate. So I'm hoping that the ones in the tailgate are going to pull, you know, enough suction to make the pushers on the radiator more efficient. Um, you're only going to flow so much, you know, through a given hole. It's just, you can't turn them so hard. So, I'm hoping that quantity will overrun quality in this in this situation. That's why I'm running four. Um, they 90 watt, 12 volt. You know, the best the best I could hope to do is go with like a 14.8 volt battery, and uh, or, or 16 one. It depends on what I can do. Um, 16 volt, excuse me. Yeah, that would, you know, that would cure a lot of it because they would just turn so much more RPM. Um, it would also be good for the nitrous solenoids for, you know, anything with, with, uh, electrical function, the voltage going up usually does, does better. So, um, a remote bottle opener should be coming in the mail sometime. Uh, it's holding me up, but I think my next deal that I got to do is get some little hose that goes on the throttle body and run it to the back and do my power wire, um, ground wires and then get this thing primed up and get a test start um i need to know that some of this stuff is working so then we can go with the gauges and all that and, and do some test runs and we've got some big plans for this thing um we have got some huge plans for this thing you know big horsepower one day i know it ain't got none right now but big big horsepower one day and it should be uh what do you say like more prepared um I, i've got more supporting mods than i have mods i guess you could say stuff like that but it's uh it's getting funner with time uh the coolest stuff is like when you take off weight under the chassis you know directly behind the bumper i mean that stuff is is the bomb it's so much fun um it ain't a whole lot of weight like i said it's in that pile you know it's 15 pounds but it's from the headlights forward you know that's super cool so yeah it took forever to cut all that crap out of there but now i can proceed and uh and feel better about it because that's the icing on the cake moving the radiator the battery all that stuff that's big chunky fast stuff but that 15 that's the icing on the cake yeah so this is the weather shirt i was talking about sorry about my uh going changing subjects but md i guess yeah it really does it fattens up so much it's so easy to work with too it's like that thick when you unroll it and you stick it down real quick it'll swell up right where you want it so i do recommend it anyway until then until next time i'm exhausted tell me why do i still feel so